Hello again, Melina. Hello, Lucas. Nice to meet you again. Great. Yes. Yeah, so last time we did a, a video about ageism that was really uh, not only really interesting, but also really popular. And uh, I also wanted to, to talk with you about something uh, that you know a lot of, yeah, that you're experienced with. And uh, it's about teaching teachers. And that's actually uh, something that's like a, a bit of a hidden world for most normal dancers because they're not teachers. And, you know, they can take classes as dancers anywhere because there are, there are a lot of teachers, but then we never actually really talk about how the teachers train themselves and uh, where they, where do, you know, I hear sometimes from some te teachers that they go, for example, to Buenos Aires and then they take lessons with certain maestros or something. But um, you seem to be doing uh, this as a, as a European and uh, teaching teachers. And uh, yeah, okay, maybe give us a, a really short in a summary of who you are before we start talking about uh, this topic. Of course. So my name is Melina Sedo. I've been teaching tango since 2001, together with my partner Detlef Engel. We're Germans, but we've traveled all over Europe and also the United States. And in 2013, we started teaching teachers. In 2015, we, uh, we wrote a book and produced a, a DVD of two and a half hours. And uh, since then, we've uh, rediscovered or let's say redefined our principles uh, over and over again, because we both come from an academic background. That means we like to understand what we're actually doing and we like to structure what we're doing. We like to structure our work. And this was also one of the first motivations we had when we get, got into teacher training because we perceived uh, a lack of structure and of clear concepts in tango. Um, maybe just a couple of stats to, to keep us going or to get us going. So as I said, we've been doing that since 2013. Um, we started with a French group in 2013 that had only one week format. So this was only basically a long seminar, but since then we've uh, changed the format to a more longer setting. So now we have uh, we had four four modules comprising one teacher training, hundred hours. Then later we prolonged it to one hundred and thirty hours. Nowadays we have a format in which we have three live seminars of a week where people come and work with us, plus additionally online seminars, uh, 20 hours of online seminars, uh, discussions and lectures in which we discuss things that are a little bit less practical. We started this combined online and live format during the Corona time where we had to change, of course, due to the restrictions, but we have kept it because it helps people who travel to our teacher trainings from afar to minimize their costs. We have a lot of teacher trainees who come from very far, for example, from the United States. And for them, it's, of course, much more convenient if we have only three modules and not four plus the online seminars. Um, when it comes to our participants, um, we have participants or we had participants from approximately 12 or 13 different countries, uh, around 125 participants so far have graduated from our teacher training. The interesting thing is that uh, almost half of the participants are German, even in the international groups. We did have two German speaking groups, but the other groups have been international groups. And I think that comes from the fact that, number one, there were already teacher trainings in the past in Germany. So Germans are used to that kind of format. Also, German people like us very often um, have the notion that they need kind of a diploma to, uh, to start a new profession, that they need to be a little bit more pre prepared to start a profession. So I think they are more likely to uh, to participate in such a training than other nations. Um, for example, we had only very few participants from France, 
after this first group we taught in French. And uh, this comes actually from a situation that we uncovered in France that was for us one of the first top motivators to go into teaching teachers because what we discovered was not only a general lack in let's say concepts or clear concepts and in organizations but uh, very often also the notion that in order to start or in, in order to teach beginners you de do not need good teachers in particular in France where uh, tango is very often organized in associations in tango clubs uh, with a lot of members tango very often is taught to beginners by um, volunteers in the community that can be a very good thing but it is a little bit problematic that they say ah for the beginners we do not need so good maestros, you do it this week or next week someone else does it or next year someone else does it. So there is no concept behind that because they believe that the good teachers are only needed for advanced dancers, which is of course completely and utterly wrong because it is the contrary. In our opinion, you need the best teachers for beginners because there you lay a foundation. And later on, later on, when you are an advanced dancer, even a very bad teacher cannot ruin your tango anymore. You know, you can get something out of every class because you have a good foundation. But if, if you do not have the foundation, you will never be able to appreciate um, impulses coming from other teachers and you just lack everything to to make you develop your tango so for us the instruction of basics is yeah the basic of everything and this is also what we concentrate on in our teacher trainings because as i said there were already teacher trainings before in germany but also sometimes things that were called master classes by Argentinian teachers. And usually these classes or these formats concentrated on just more complex movements. So you have different levels, beginners, intermediate, advanced, and then you have the master class or the teacher training then in Germany. And this is where you learn the most advanced movements, you know, but for me, this, doesn't make any sense. So already, even before we started our teacher training, I think this was in 2007, we were for the first time asked to do a master class in a Finnish festival. And whilst the other teachers were doing their, oh, we have to do more advanced movements in the master class format, we thought, okay, Aha, masterclass, that means teachers. So we need to do something structural. And we did, did a structured seminar on centers of rotation with presentations and with, with charts and everything to, to discover these different centers that we need to understand in the dance. So this was already when, before we started our teacher training, our idea of instruction for teachers was, okay, teachers need to understand what they're doing and they need the pedagogical skills to teach that, uh, but not more complex movements. The complex movements are not interesting for us. They are just a result of what you have done in your earlier years, but they are not relevant when it comes to tango teachers. So this was basically our, our, our first motivation to, to start teaching teachers and uh, to and to develop a format for teachers. This was, let's say, our first, um, first initi initiation into, into the topic. How, how do you think you came uh, to that conclusion? Uh, because you said that, that the, these master classes were the only, really, really the only thing available and that you thought it was not. But how, how did you um, realize that? Yeah, well, I mean, we have been as, as, as dancers in earlier years, we had been to, to these forms of master classes, not in Buenos Aires and not following an entire course, but we had been to master classes in festivals and stuff. And we were always very 
let's say, surprised by the fact that in these master classes, you just learn more complex steps. Yeah. Uh, we had we had also when we started teaching because we had the same idea we said okay ah oh, obviously we're going to start teaching so maybe we would need some more education on the topic so we looked at the uh, lesson plans of tango teacher trainings in Germany because as I said there existed already some and what we found was mostly learning steps you know having a repertoire of steps and then. Um, up to very complex movements and even uh, the development of tango choreographies. But we are social dancers, so a tango choreography does not bring me anywhere. So then in the end, we decided to not go to such a teacher training because, because we didn't need any more complex steps. We did also not need a choreography. We needed a sound knowledge of the basics. How is tango uh, which elements uh, are important in tango? How do you put them together? What about musicality? The, the frustrating thing, of course, was that we had to develop all of this then on our own. Yeah. And it be, be, until we started then systematically training teachers, we had already been teaching for 12 years. And it took us at least that long to develop a sound concept of what we want to teach and how we want to teach it and how we want to structure it. And since then, we've been developing our concept even more because through the teacher trainings, through the questions in, the, in these classes, through the um, problems arising, we learned even more and we learned also from our students. So, so the teacher training now in uh, 2024 is not the same teacher training that it was in 2013 when we started with our first French group. It has developed a lot and, and even changed in, in some aspects. Yeah, so it may, may be a bit of a redundant question by now, but um, I'm still wondering, like, how did you get into teaching teachers? Um, I'm not sure if that's been completely answered yet. Yeah, I'm not so sure what you're asking here. How do we get to that? I mean, as I said, we, we felt oh, we felt that we ourselves, when we, when we started, we lacked some information. We wanted to give new teachers or even people who had been teaching uh, that information that we lacked. And as we had been working so intensively on our own concept, there was just a moment in our career, let's call it that way, uh, when basically it was me, when I had the idea, listen, now is the time to, uh, uh, to, actually, to actually promote this and to actually uh, convey this, uh, these principles. So basically, we just set up a first format and started making publicity to it. And people, of course, responded to that. So, so it was our own idea. And it came out of this own, uh, of our own, uh, came out of our own history of the, 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 the need to, to give, or let's say the wish to give other teachers a better starting point than we had when we started. Because this was just frustrating. It was just frustrating in the beginning. And we don't want other teachers to have the same problems that we had in the beginning. So this was our first and big motivation. Does this answer your question? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. W would you say you guys were pioneers in this? No, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that we are pioneers because, as I said, there were other teacher trainings already in Germany and I guess also in Argentina. Um, but I mean, like in the in specifically in the like the real teacher training. So, like... I mean, um, maybe I mean, I, of course, I cannot compare it to to all the other teacher trainings that exist. But I'm 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 pretty sure that no other teacher training uh, will convey such a such a let's say entire concept of technique and musicality as we do it on uh, in in its basics because as i said we concentrate on the basics of tango and uh this is 
basically, again, my basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> this is basically uh, defining the elements you have in Tango, which are only five, defining the grammar in Tango, analyzing music. This is, of course, let's say the technical part, then having a social component in that, and also having a large, large section in which we talk about uh, pedagogical methods in talk, where we talk about, um, where we talk about um, organizing, organizing events, organizing classes, and all of, let's say, the practical aspects that come from teaching. So I, I think that, let's say, in this completeness, we might be unique, but of course I cannot, I mean, yeah. I, I have not compared it to others in the last couple of years. So there might be others as well. <coughs> yes. In any, in, in any case, in any case, our, our, our goals nowadays, our goals nowadays are to, to, to convey this concept of technique on musicality that is free of discrepancies, that is complete really, uh, teach to structure teaching methodically, our goal is also basically to motivate people to teach because not everyone who comes to our teacher training will already have the plan to teach. Half of the people maybe are teachers or who plan to teach. The other half of them are doing that to widen their tango knowledge and to work on their dancing skills, basically work on their musicality and everything because it's almost complete format. But our secret, our secret motivation is of course to get them teaching. Um, but there are two more general goals in the teacher training and these speak more to, uh, let's say the individual approach. And this is of course, to help better the dance quality of the participants in both roles, because of course we learn both roles in the teacher training and to help recognize the potentials and limitations of each person. Because um, I think you already also had the idea of talking a little bit about the requirements of tango teachers. Um, I don't think that a tango teacher needs to be the very best dancer in the world, you know? I also do not know, I uh, think that a tango teacher needs to know all kinds of steps and movements. Everyone who has a clear concept about a part of tango can convey that to someone else. If this person knows about their own limitations, we, for example, we do not know everything. Huh? We do not, for example, we are no specialists in, uh, let's say, um, more extravagant movements like volgadas, colgadas, and and saccadas or whatever. We do not teach. We do not teach open, open embrace tango with jumps and saltos and whatever. So, so, so we will not aspire to become professionals who concentrate on this form of teaching but if we know that if we know that then we can limit ourselves to the things that we know really well yeah of course we have also in our teaching uh, repertoire we do have movements that are uh, more complex and yes we also have um um, let's say versions of colgadas and volcadas and, and ganchos and stuff that are suited for the social dance floor. We also want to convey these things to people who are more advanced dancers, but this is not what is really important. If a tango teacher, for example, just knows, let's say, how to change weight, do side steps, walk in parallel system, connect the movement in a nice embrace to the musical phrases, then this person could teach exactly that to someone else. You know, he or the, or she should then not aspire to teach, for example, ochos or turns, because maybe this person is not good enough yet to teach exactly that. But if he or she knows what she can do, then she can already be a part of the tango teaching community, so to say. 
So, so tango teachers for me are teachers in, uh, in the first instance and, and teachers should know, should have a good basis of what they are teaching. So you yeah. have to know what you want to teach. Yes, but I guess like the typical tango teacher needs to be like a generalist and know about a bunch of things that are important. So um, yeah, that depends on that depends on why. I mean, well, for example, if you're teaching a beginner course, like there are a bunch of things you need to be able to explain really well. And that's exactly, not, you know, that's not for kadas, but there are like a bunch of for. But well, I'm just thinking of what you uh, what you said about the French community and how there mm -hmm. are a lot of like uh, um, associations with people mm -hmm. uh, teaching who probably do not necessarily have the credentials, so to say, to teach. But there, yes. there is some some type of like system of credentials, right? There has to be yes. some kind of basis. Of course, of course. But but as a tango teacher, you define your basis. So if you are tango, let's say a class or a course of ten units, a course of ten units could contain walking in parallel and cross system, ochos, turns, and milonga and vals. You know, but a course of ten lessons can also contain. The embrace, um, change of weight, side steps, walking forwards and backwards, changing the lanes, connecting to the musical phrases, and maybe doing some kind of trust pièce to express double speed. You know, you do not need to know crosses. You do not need to teach ochos. You define, as a tango teacher, you define the content of your class. And if you concentrate on the things that you really understand and that you really execute well, then you can get a very, very valuable information to everyone who is participating in that class. Nobody forces us in a beginner's class to, for example, teach the eight count basic or to teach um, the ocho cortado or to teach a turn or whatever. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. In our, in our basics class, people, I mean, it depends a little bit on how many, how many, uh, how many evenings we have. Sometimes we have formats of six, sometimes we have formats of, of, of 10, 10 courses. But people usually come to walking in cross system and doing milonguero ochos. No turns yet. They have learned to curve their movements on the dance floor. No turns yet. Nothing more complex. And, and this is what we concentrate on. Then there are other courses, you know, but as a tango teacher, you can also say, listen, I'm going to concentrate on teaching beginners classes. You know, and I'm just going to do this and someone else can do the rest. And this is basically also what we are doing. Of course, our repertoire is much bigger, you know, but we also say for a lot of things, we say we don't have to teach that because other people can do that. They might be specialists in another field. We are specialists for structural anas analysis for basic technique and communication and for musicality so this is what we teach and and other stuff for example complex movements or choreographies or whatever kind of stuff can be done by other people and this is why my general approach my very general approach to tango teaching is that as long as you know your potential and your limitations as long as you know enough or have a good basis in what you want to teach and you limit to yourself to to what you can already do and explain then you can be a very valuable addition to the community and this is what we want to enhance you know we want to enhance good teaching of the basics so so this is what we do and you know there are a lot of a lot of advanced teachers who participate in our teacher trainings, but also in many other formats, like for example, our basic classes or basic seminars and stuff like that, because they want to work on the quality of their movement and on exactly these basics, okay? Um, we do not offer them lots of 
huge movements with which they can impress others. We just don't do that because other people already do that. So why should we do that? <laughs> so it's basically my, my general approach. But um, maybe if you want to know a little bit more about what we actually do in the teacher training, so, so the content of our teacher training, um, I've talked about roughly already. So we have, uh, let's say, tango technique and application in the social dance. This comprises, let's say, 40% um, of our uh, curriculum is tango technique and application in the social dance. And these are the basics in parallel and cross system, also centers of rotation and uh, turn movements, maybe even entradas if we do have enough time. But in any case, the entire, let's say, technique that you need to uh, put together movements. And when I'm talking about this tango technique and application on the social dance floor, this is all improvised. There are no steps in there because we have maybe eight or 10 hours in which we teach step examples. For example, for example, if you know how to do shifts of weight, side steps, front step, back steps, pivots and crosses that come out of pivots, then you can put together the a uh, basic eight count step, you know, the, uh, I don't know how other people call it. So the uh, tango basic step, but you can put it together, you know, but first we learn the elements and how to improvise with this elements. And then we need only very little time to say, okay, listen, if you want, you could put together these elements to create this typical step or the ocho cortado or a certain turn or a certain variation of ochos, but they come always constructed of the elements and uh, grammatical structures that people have learned from us. The other big, big topic in our teacher training is musicality. We have at least uh, 30 to 35 hours of um, musicality, which also means basics of musicality first, different speeds, simple rhythms, more complex rhythms, uh, phrases and structures of tangos, but also, of course, um, dynamics of movements and um, knowledge about how the different orchestras apply the different um, musical phenomena, so orchestra knowledge. Um, then we have discussions and uh, lectures that have to do with the tango in general in the social and historical concept. So there will be a lot of a lot of discussions about, for example, how do I get beginners to integrate in the tango community? How do I implement uh, the códigos for the dance floor? How do I use mirada cabeceo and all kinds of discussions? How do I work with double rolling? How do I teach as a single teacher? Then, of course, we have a huge block that deals with um, pedagogics and didactics, so different learning channels, different forms of, uh, of teaching. Um, we have a very practical approach for about that because in our teacher training, uh, the participants already in the first module have to do short teaching units. So they learn by doing and they get feedback and also concepts. And in the last in the last teaching module, uh, for the last teaching module, they have to prepare an entire class together in a group and uh, basically do this as a demonstration class with uh, real participants. So, so they have they get to do all that already in the teacher training. Hmm. Yeah, and the, and, the last, and the last thing we do is, of course, management, so organization of tango, tango classes, organization of tango events, and also some basics of tango DJing. So, so as you can see, this is a huge curriculum. Yeah. And, and, and it is a combination, basically, of input, input coming from us, um, discussions and interactive work. And a lot of home assignments. So people have to develop their uh, teaching assignments. They have to develop orchestra lectures. Um, and this is quite interesting. Maybe you know, for example, um, David Thomas, 
who has uh, written this book about tango orchestras, 20 tango orchestras, and now he's also promoted uh, some new. He came to that because he was a member of our first tango teacher training in 2013. And he had this home assignment to, to present one tango orchestra with its characteristics. And from that developed um, his work with oh, uh, tango nice. orchestras. So, so stuff like that, people have to do that for the tango teacher training. It's not that we stand there and talk and show all the time, but it's a very, very interactive approach uh, that depends a lot on the um, on everyone participating actively. It's not something that you can just consume, but uh, people work together. And in this, of course, we are also using the resources of everyone who participates because there might be very skilled and very knowledgeable people in our teacher training who can contribute a lot. It's not us, you know, giving the input. Everyone participates in that. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So this was a little bit about content of our teacher training, how we structured it, what are our goals, basically. Oh, I forgot my maybe one super goal that we have or one, let's say, um, <laughs> major motivation for us to to teach or also in particular to teach teachers is um, that we are social dancers so what do we need what do we want we want more people to dance with on the social dance floor so our main motivation to teach and in particular to teach teachers because they broaden the spectrum further is to help create more dancers with whom we want to dance on the social dance floor this is, you know, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and by teaching teachers, you know, we have distributors. We do not only work with the end customers, we work with others who create more people with whom we want to dance. So this is basically one of our main motivations to have more dancers to dance with in tango. Yes. <laughs> well, it's been really interesting. Um, maybe one last question. Is there anything else that uh, maybe not really like... Uh, so straightforward for people listening about uh, like the world of tango teachers. Yeah, I mean, again, there is, um, of course, some, let's say, problems that we have. And, and that has to do also with the requirements for teacher training. And um, I mean, for us, of course, in order to, to be a good teacher, you do not necessarily uh, have to do a teacher training. Um, if you yourself are a very structured person and can develop your own concepts. No problem there, but a lot of people do not come with that knowledge in the beginning. And this is where we want to give a little bit of a fast track. But as I said, as I said, a lot of people who do our teacher trainings do not participate only because they want to become tango teachers. I think when I look um, at my statistics, Approximately half of our participants have taught tango or are doing that right now in the moment. And the other half have participated in order to further their own dance level. So in order to participate in such a teacher training, you do not need to want to become teachers. You can do that just to develop your own skills. And, and a lot of people even have done that now for repeated times. There are people who have done our teacher trainings twice or three times because for them, this is just the most effective and the most complex and, and let's say complete learning format that we are offering. So, so they do it as a training for themselves. Yes, because, sorry, uh, it makes me like, it really makes me smile because you, you, you were saying that in the past there were these master classes for people who really wanted to learn on the highest level yeah. and um, they were only really focused on difficult figures mm -hmm. but now you've actually created kind of a format that's totally like based on the, the true basics of tango but that's actually the, the most difficult part like the most challenging part in the end to really get that right so I understand very much why these people are so enthusiastic, even though if they're not planning to teach, because you just get to like really, it's like a really high level of of the same things that you were learning as a beginner, in a sense. But it's just it's just so deep, like it's so endlessly deep. 
Exactly. This is what we found as well. And this is why I said our teacher training has changed because we get deeper and deeper into the material. So now we do not we do not teach more in our teacher training, but we teach the basics even deeper and deeper. In the very first teacher training, for example, we still had time to uh, look at Volcadas, Colgadas and Ganchos and Voleos. We do not have the time for that anymore because just the section on changing weight or doing one forward step takes longer than it did before because we know so much more about it now and people are very eager to go to dig really deep into the basics to to enhance their dancing and this is also why when we um when people want to participate in our teacher training uh, there are there are usually two things that are important for me. One thing is, of course, what kind of dance experience do they have? Okay, but again, they do not have to be super advanced dancers, um, but they just have to be very willing to uh, to work on the basics, you know, and 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 to face lots of problems that will come up in that process because working on the basics is the hardest thing to do and usually causes also some frustration because you you notice you might have been dancing for many years but when you try it really when you try for example to do a very step just forward or backward there might already be huge problems so these are things that are really really difficult to do so we need people who are highly motivated to dig into the basics and we need people in our teacher training who are social dancers and come with the same motivation that we have who come with the with the same philosophy with the philosophy that tango is not doing more and more complex step but that tango lies in the connection you have you know with your own to your own body to the partner in the embrace to the music and also to the other dancers around you because this is a social dance so so the social aspects play such a big role for us and 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 you know questions of performing tango or questions of impressing people with uh, lots of lots of uh, very high level movements they don't even come into our minds as tango teachers uh, I want to I want to make people happy with these simple things. I want to give people who uh, do a basic class. I want to give them the the experience uh, to to connect with a partner and to connect with the music right from the beginning, just by doing a couple of shifts away together. And they can this can already make someone happy and so much more happier than than memorizing a step. So. So this is why, why the structural approach is so super important for us. And this is what we try to convey in our teacher training and, and try to motivate people to teach. Yes. Yep. So is there anything else left uh, uh, that you want to say or have we really um, covered everything that's important? Yeah, no, no, I, I don't think so. I, can, I don't think so. I think I've, I've said most of the really important things that I had in mind. There would be so much more to, to explain and to talk about because, you know, the teacher training for me personally is our most exciting format, you know, also the format that excites me most and that I love most because because I know people who come to to their teacher training they will have the motivation to change something about their tango and to develop and this is always so refreshing to see and so so much fun to work with you know it's just for me it is just something I, I like doing a lot and and that I will surely continue doing because because it is so super rewarding for us also because oh yeah this is might actually be something uh, because with our teacher trainings we also connect people you know people who have done a teacher training of 120 hours together they are very likely to become friends they will have connections over different different countries and continents even and once in a while we organize a tango teacher conference where people from the different group comes together Wow. Or they visit each other in, in, in their cities or teach for each other in their communities. So, so to form these connections and, uh, 
and help them, you know, create bonds with other teachers and with other dancers all over the world is, is, is super. That's just a very, very uh, rewarding thing to do. Yeah, so maybe one practical question. So you were talking, for example, about how many hours did you say uh, these people... Almost 130 basically nowadays. Yes, but uh, not all of that is online. No, so, no, 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 no. So online... They... Do they, but they do they stay uh, for a while, like in a, 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 in a certain location in Germany yeah, or? Yeah, yeah, they come. They come to us for basically three weeks, three modules. You know, over over half a year or three quarters of a year, they come for three modules, each module a week. They come to us to Saarbrücken in Germany, and in between these modules, we have the online sessions. So the online sessions are approximately 20 hours of the 130 hours so approximately 110 hours are live on site with us together in Saarbrücken okay okay well uh let's just uh, put some information in the video description uh yeah uh, where yeah, I post course. this and then people can uh, check for themselves but I think we discussed uh, most of the important things here and I think it was really interesting for um People are sometimes looking for structure in tango, right? Because yeah. tango is so broad and it can be so taught in so many ways. But it's good to know that some people are, are trying to uh, standardize uh, this a bit. And uh, you, you seem to have really good experiences doing so and uh, helping other people as well, not just as teachers, but also as dancers. So it sounds like a really good uh, initiative. And uh, it was very interesting to hear about it. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about this. Uh, as I said, it's one of my my most uh, cherished uh, formats, a uh, thing that I like doing so much. So I'm very enthusiastic about that. Yes, yes. Well, uh, thank you for uh, this time and I hope to speak to you again. Hopefully, yes. Thank you so much.